What's going on, y'all? I am Jaren. I am a voice teacher, speech trainer, and the founder and owner of this marvelous studio, the Jaren M. Luger Studio. Many of you have asked for this video, and I wanted to deliver it. He's an amazing singer. I'm glad I'm doing it now. And this song is so catchy and so fun, you know, and he is singing the stew out of this song. So let's just get right into it, y'all. Here is St. Harrison singing Ego Talking on The Color Show. falsetto, head voice, heady, whatever you want to call it. It is so conditioned and it is so free. He has so much control in that part of his voice, whatever you want to call it, the register, whatever it is that you want to call it. He has so much control in this part of his voice. And it's just so free, like, just like, mm, like, almost just like, not almost, it is second nature. Just like, mm, I'm just singing. Like, he is just naturally gifted to sing up there like this. A lot of times people have problems with their head voice or falsetto, whatever you wanna call it, that headier part, the thinner fold part of your voice. But a lot of times I tell them, it's not that you can't access it, you have to get used to accessing it and condition yourself to access it. So a way to do that is to sing up there, to get used to feeling your voice up there, and feeling your voice vibrate and phonate and get used to that feeling and find that balance that works for you in that part of your voice. And also thinking about your voice as like a whole entity, not just section, section, section. So it's not just head voice, just chest voice, or just, you know, falsetto, head voice. It's all one entity working in different ways, you know? And I really think that his head voice just is a proven display that if you condition your voice right, you can sing anything you want to sing, essentially. So he went from like a headier, da 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 da, chesty da 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 da. But the balance between those two registers, the two parts of his voice, it was pretty well distributed. The balance was. It's almost like you could even tell when he switched. The only indication that I heard was that the voice got a little thicker and a little brighter when he went down to the chest voice. But I mean, the way he uses head voice to go back and down and back and forth, it's just about conditioning and having that balance. Because another thing about head voice and chest voice, or whatever you want to call it. Another thing is that people kind of over intensify or over push one part over the other or they don't know how to balance it or give too much intensity to one part over the other. But I feel like he's found such a way to kind of have both parts of his voice or all parts of his voice very balanced so you can hardly tell when he's switching between registers or whatever you want to call it. And that's to me some of the magic that is his voice. Again, he's also just extremely gifted and boy can sing anything. But I think a part of his magic is the balance he's found or the balance he's always had with using all parts of his voice and doing what he wants to do with it. This is vocal control 101, essentially. Talking! He had a little throat at the end of that talking. Talking! Right there, yeah. Baby, don't roll your eyes up, still me, don't Did you hear, baby, don't roll your eyes? You hear that switch? Like I said, it's not a huge stark difference of a switch, but you can hear the color difference in the vocal fold mass, if you will. It gets a little thicker, obviously, because it's a thick folds, chest voice, the vocal folds come together more thickly in that part of your voice or in that register that you want to use. But again, his balance is so well distributed with intensity, with volume, with air pressure, all these things just so well balanced. So he just has freedom because he's not over pushing one part over the other. He's just distributing his vocal energy very equally, if I can say it like that. And I can't do it like him. Like, I, I tried to do this challenge <laughs> when it was out. Like, mm -mm, it just didn't work for my voice. It just don't sound as good as him. <laughs> 
but you see the word ego, that E sound was E. So you see when he comes down, the lips kind of pucker. E. You see what I'm saying? So instead of E. He did he. You see the difference? And that changes the color of the voice when you change the vocal track shape. When you change the lip shape, it changes the color. And the, I guess even the phonation or the technique behind the voice itself. It changes the way the voice is being used and how the voice is being heard. So some of them had a glottal onset. So without the glottal onset, it was e. Then he added the glottal onset e e. But I don't think he took a breath between the glottal onsets. It was e e like that. So it was an e e. Mm -mm. He kind of just went straight through. So you can have that control. You can bring on the glottal onset at will without taking a breath beforehand. Again, he is a poster child or a poster person, if you will, for vocal control. He just has such great vocal technique and control and gifting, you know, vocally. Vibrato has such like a billowy, smooth, it almost just kind of has a real buoyancy to it. It's really buoyant. It's not really fast, but it's not super duper slow. It just has a nice billowy kind of nature to it. It kind of just kind of reverberates, you know? And I say that it's your fault cause you can't take a hint. You see how percussive that line was? He really uses consonants, not necessarily a harsh way, but really using the consonants to kind of help the vocal line progress rhythmically. I feel like the texture of his falsetto or head voice, whatever you want to call it, that thinner, fold, heady spot. Ah, it's almost like there's a little bit of like an air usage in the soft palate a little bit. Ah, my ego. Ego. And I feel like the tongue is a part of it too. I feel like the tongue may be up and back a little bit. Yeah. Ego. And I can't quite do it as strong as he is. Almost like a nasal, falsetto, bright, twangy combination of a sound. It's really interesting, but it makes his head voice stand out. And it makes a part of his voice so strong. But clearly he's not having a problem singing up there. Like, it's not hurting him or anything like that. But it's such an interesting sound. It's a cool sound. It's very unique. And I feel like a part of that is just who he is. Kind of how he's made up in here. Kind of just how things are structured in here. Because everybody has a different structure laryngeally, which is what makes us sound unique to ourselves. I often say that our voice is our fingerprint. You know, because every fingerprint we have is different. There's no two fingerprints that are identical, right, for each human. So it's the same thing with our voice. Everybody laryngeally is made up differently. Though our vocal folds buzz and make noise and vibrate, it's our larynx and our nose and how things are shaped in here that influences the sound, the texture, the timbres that we have. And I think that's why a lot of times you see siblings who sing together or who sing, oftentimes they sound similar because they have similar genetic makeup up in here. And I'm talking about nasal, oral, pharynx, larynx, all of these things up in here that helps. Even the lips, teeth, all those things can influence the sound because think about it. Some people who get braces when they start to sing, it gets harder to sing because there's now something on your teeth that you have to incorporate into your articulation that you didn't have to do prior to having braces. So that's what I'm talking about. So when the vocal tract changes, the sound changes. But even that, our vocal tract and our throat and everything, we have certain shapes in here and how things are kind of formulated just genetically that influences how we sing. So I think a part of his sound is really just how he's genetically made up, how he just naturally is gifted. But I, 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 I do a little bit of a yo 
yodel flip and then that but I right there like a little yodel flip but that chesty part of the lower part still wasn't super duper chesty it was almost like a light chesty moment a light thick fold moment and then he switched into that heady but I kind of like that So I think it's that nasal thing and also the vowel because everything is spread. Mm, but I... Yeah, there's a little bit of a tongue nasal spread vowel combination that goes into that cool head voice texture that he has. Blame it on the drink because we had some. Blame it on the drink. Da -da -da -da. You see how that yodel flipping, that register flipping, vocal fold mass changing. Da so it's thin, 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 thick, or head, 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 chest, whatever you want to call it. Mode one, mode one, mode one, mode two, whatever you want to call it. He does a lot of that changing of the register, but he's getting a little bit louder here. So then the chest voice, the thick folds, the chesty sound is getting a little bit more chesty because he's getting a little bit more louder in intensity, but that's an intentional decision that he is making as the artist singing the song. So now there's a little bit more of a stark difference between the heady voice and a chesty voice, but it's still well balanced. Balance, he's just changing the balance for the sake of the climax or for the sake of the plot of the song or the context, if you will. That's just my ego talking. It's a lot of those throws, and even through like the nasal, you know, NG sounds. Ego talking. And it wasn't talking, obviously, it's talking. That's just my ego talking. You see how it's talking with the little throw at the end. Yeah. That's just Baby, don't roll your eyes. So the word is ego, but he opens up the O of ego, ego, uh, almost like with the W undertone glide and O, uh, like a ah, 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 yeah, like a ah vowel. He had a little squall up in that little na, na, na right there. Na, na. Something like that, like a little little vocal fold squall, a little grit there, okay? <laughs> if you enjoyed this analysis, click subscribe down below to click the alert button next to it so you know when the next video is posted. And as I will always, always, always say to you, be vocally bold, creative, and aware, but most of all, be vocally you. All right, y'all, love you. I'll see y'all soon.